salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to, uh, I don't know, what are we going to open up to? Uh, week two without my notes. Um, let's do, let's do Isaiah chapter 29. It's always a good one. It's Isaiah chapter 29. They acting like they darn drunk, right? So now the book is trying to enlighten us. The book is trying to let us know people are in darkness. Let's keep talking about it. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. He said the vision of all. In other words, when it says vision of all, it's talking about the prophecy of the book, right? The prophecy of the book. When it says a vision, the Most High God say when he speak to a man, he speak to him in a vision or in a dream, right? So if he speaks to the people in a vision or in a dream, and the people say they can't see it, right? The vision of all, that means that the vision of all is still like a book. So the vision of all is talking about the book. Right? Keep going. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says... I am not learned. Right? So he said, it's just like the book. Now, I understand. Wait, the, sorry. The Bible is, I mean, the, the, the this prophecy right now is trying to explain to us the state and the condition of our people. He said, he started off by letting you know, listen, everybody's stumbling around like they drunk. But it's not that they drunk. It's not strong drink. He said, and the prophets, they but been covered. In other words, the prophets can't tell you what's about to happen no more. So the Most High God said, everybody in the place where nobody can really tell what's going on. He said, and the vision of all, in other words, the written word, the vision of all is sealed like a book. Keep going. And the book is delivered to him that is, wait, and the, uh, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. Right? He said, it's like a book where if you took it to somebody, he tried to read it, he's like, I can't open it. Right? Or what else is it like? And the book is delivered to him that is uh, learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not.
I was like, well, negative in the sense that you're going to hell, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But negative in the sense, like, I want to convince you not to go to hell? No, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? You made that choice, you know what I'm saying? You're not interested in doing something else. I was like, now, however, if you told me I believe the Bible and I want to make it into the kingdom and all that, then we're going to have a different conversation, right? Then I'm going to be like, eh, nah, you can't be doing that or you shouldn't be doing that. And I'll be bugging you, trying to push you in the right direction. But if you don't indicate to me you want to go that direction, what I'm going to be bothering you for? You know what I'm saying? You enjoy your life. You do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? You have, you have joy in your sin. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you need to do. You know what I'm saying? She's like, mm -hmm. I see. Oh, like, yeah. You do see. <laughs> <laughs> Since you say you see, you know what I'm saying? Your sin remains. You know what I'm saying? Grab a, grab a, grab a, mm, what we want? Do the running. Chapter 30 or 31? Uh, last, uh, last one I got in my notebook, 30. We ended up on 30, verse 20. Alright, well then, uh, let's do, let's do Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1. We already did the, uh, oh, we did the, what? The annulling of the vow and the annulling for the wife and the father. Oh, numbers? Yeah. Mm hmm. That's numbers? Yeah, numbers. That is sure. numbers 30. It's Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1. I thought we did 31. Why do I feel like we did 31? Mm, nope. Mm, 31. Alright. It's number chapter, I mean, it's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1. Oh, sorry. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel and said unto them, I am 120 years old. Yeah. It's Numbers chapter 20, verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron and thy brother, thou and Aaron and thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Mm -hmm. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. Mm -hmm. and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Who <laughs> did Moses? Moses, our God said, Go get water out of the rock, right? Strike the rock. You know what I'm saying? Moses went over there, he did exactly what the Most High God said. Then he also said, Must we fetch you this water out of this rock? Right? To the naked eye, we look at that and be like, Alright, Moses did what God said. Watch how the Most High God react, though. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank and their beasts also. Uh huh. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not. Moses, look, Moses, Moses did exactly what the Most High God said, and the Most High God came back and said, because you didn't believe me. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Most High God telling you to do something? Right? This is a God that nobody else sees. You know what I'm saying? He told you to do something. You do exactly what the man tells you to do. You know what I'm saying? You know, you get to run in your mouth while you're doing it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Must we fetch you this water? You know what I'm saying? You run in your mouth. Then at the end of it, he's like, you know what? Because you didn't believe me. Then why I didn't believe? You know what I'm saying? I did it. You know what I'm saying? He said, 
yeah, because you didn't believe me what? Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Uh -huh. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. You know why he said he didn't believe him? Was sanctified in them. Mm -hmm. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh. We good. Right. Go, uh, go back to Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy chapter thirty-one, verse uh, whatever, three. Verse, now, verse three. So that's the reason that Moses was told that he couldn't go in. So now Joshua has to go up. Remember, Joshua was the one who who, who was pretty much a servant to Moses. You know what I'm saying? So he was a servant to Moses. He used to kind of wait on the man and foot. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of, you know, be be his right hand man. So now Joshua is gonna take over the ship. All right, let's keep going. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to all king of the Amorites and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall give them up before your face that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that does go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That's right. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage. For thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them. That's right. And thou shalt cause them to inherit, and cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that does go before thee. Mm -hmm. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. That's that's how the people, you know what I'm saying, when they get the Lord will never fail, never leave you or forsake you. All right? Watch this. We're going we to learn some stuff today. Keep going. Fear not, neither be dismayed. He said, he will not fail thee, neither forsake you. Fail not, neither be dismayed. In other words, don't be scared. Keep going. Don't be scared. Be successful. Don't be scared. Keep going. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests. Keep the feast of tabernacles, mm -hmm. and it shall be he, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, 
the Lord of hosts, even unto them shall be no rain. Okay. And if the family are of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of what? Tabernacles. So we just heard our law. Our law told us, you know what I'm saying, every, every seven years, you got to come up and keep the feast. Right? And in the feast, this law is going to be read to them. Then we hear in the prophecy, in the end times, we're going to have people that have to come up every single year in the Feast of Tabernacle. And if they don't come up, it's going to be a plague. Let's hear about it. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh -huh. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the post of the Lord's house shall be like the bowels before the altar. Uh -huh. Bowels before the altar. Yea, every part of Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seed therein. And in that day shall there be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Grab, uh, grab Micah for me. It's Micah chapter 4. Give me verse 1. Alright, this Feast of Tabernacles is important. These people are not going to tell you that. You know what they go, you know what they're getting ready to celebrate? Labor Day. You know what I'm saying? They're getting ready to celebrate some of our Labor Day. They, they prepare for, uh, Halloween. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they start to save up to get Thanksgiving dinner. They gonna wrap that whole season up. You know what they gonna wrap it up with? Christmas. <laughs> I hate to talk to you. I mean, they fall winter. They looking at that thing. They looking at man. It's about to be a nice year. 2018. Be, it be. Micah chapter 4, give me verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established. In the he top said, of the In the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord, it shall be established. What? In the top of the mountains. In the top of the mountain. Well, I mean, when you look up, it's going to be one thing high. Right? Keep going. Everything got to be brought low, just so the man can be exalted and made high. Watch this. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. Mm -hmm. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. He going to do what? Teach us of his ways. Why do you think that happened? Because Moses told you, when the Feast of Tabernacle come, let them all come here. And every seven years, this law got to be taught. Who do you think going to be doing the teaching? Why do you think it say in our law, no more will they have to ever say, here, know him, to your brother? Because from the least to the greatest, what? They all going to know me. You're going to bring your butt here and learn. And you're going to learn it from the man. I ain't going to have to teach you nothing. The man going to sit there and teach it too. Everybody be thinking this stuff is magic. You ain't never heard no magic. Most of God don't deal with magic. All this stuff going to be work. You have to obey. You have to do what he's saying. If you don't, your butt gonna get a play. You're gonna be miserable. Keep going. Matter of fact, we don't need that. Go ahead and go to uh, Zechariah chapter eight for me. Man, you let these people tell it. This stuff don't mean nothing. You let these Christians tell it. It don't mean nothing. You let these Muslims tell it. All you gotta do is blow your darn self up and get fourteen virgin wives.
That ain't right for them to be structured, dressed in bow ties and darn suits. That ain't right. That ain't good. You know what I'm saying? Be all organized. You know what I'm saying? Militant. You know, that's how their religion is. You know what I'm saying? Their religion, it taught them to be that way. They took that from us. They're like, why the Christians ain't like that? I'm like, the Christians ain't really got no God. Now the Muslims ain't got no God either. But at least they took a they took a good part. You know, they took a good part from our book. You know what I'm saying? They kept it militant and kept it structured. That's how God is. You know, the Christians took the other part. You know, the Christians got some good parts that they took too. At the end of it, you take both of them. Both of them is rotten religions. Both of them can't, they ain't gonna get you saved. All right? Muslim got a, a, a they, you know what I'm saying? In, in some sense, the, the, the black Muslim, they got a nice exterior. All of them cussing and lying and smoking weed. They're gonna go right to darn hell. The Christians, a lot of them ain't even trying. Some of them smoking weed and cussing and lying too. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them, they clean up their darn mouth. All right, they clean up their darn mouth, you know what I'm saying? The white Christian, you know what I'm saying? Not, not so much of the black Christian. They'll only say stuff like the A word, maybe the S word, but they don't say like the big one. Oh, no, they ain't gonna say no big one. They ain't gonna say no big one. On a Sunday? <laughs> no, nah, they ain't saying no big one on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? So you just, you just kind of partially clean it up. Most of God looking for a complete package. He looking for the whole thing. Who gonna stand up and be the man for the whole thing? Who gonna stand up and say, you know what? No more compromise. No more compromise. Let me just do what the Most High God told me to do. That's what we're trying to teach. That's what we're trying to preach. That's what we're trying to encourage. All right? That's what we're trying to lift people to do. TJ, it's not easy when you're a sinner. All right? When you're a sinner, that thing is not easy. When you when you spend your whole life striving and wanting and lusting and needing and all this other stuff that we got going on and cussing and we come from different backgrounds and People raise us like this. We got all these influences. But all that stuff. Zechariah chapter 8 verse uh, verse 20 Thus says the Lord of hosts mm -hmm. It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts uh -huh. I will go also uh huh. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. Are they gonna come where? To seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem mm. and to pray before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord of hosts: In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of the out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. What do you think this is? He said, In that day. They're going to find out who the real Jew is, who the real Israelite is, and 10 people going to take hold of his clothes and be like, listen, I'm trying to go to Jerusalem with you because we heard that you got the real God. That day coming. That day coming. When we start heading back to this land, these people going to see what's going on. They're going to be like, we need to be with y'all. This stuff lining up. People don't see it happening. This stuff lining up. All right? You people always want to, you know what I'm saying, I want you to have your, your eyes on Israel and, and the Middle East and all that. No, keep your eye on Greece. Keep your eye on Turkey. Keep your eye on Saudi Arabia. All right? You know what I'm saying? And already, you can see these people moving. That's stuff that's in the book. That's stuff that you can prove out. A lot of stuff you can't, these people can't prove out nothing about Israel. They don't even know who really supposed to be in Israel. They think the white people are the Jews. How you going to prove something out and you still think the white people are the Jews? We the Hebrews. We the descendants of the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Book don't even make sense if you try to look at it a different way.
after 20 years old and a man just tell you that you're about to die. Yeah, that thing is for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we right there to the mountaintop. That thing is it for you. Go ahead and bring the boy up here so I can show him, how to, show him what he got to do. All right, keep going. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of a cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt keep, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whether they go to be among them. Moses, he gave Moses the game. He's like, Listen, after your butt die, these people are gonna go and turn aside. They don't go a whoring after these other gods. I, these people can't fool me. Most of God just give them again. I know you. You did listen. You did the best you darn could. Don't even worry about it. These people ain't gonna stay in this. All right, keep going. Watch it. And they will forsake me and break my covenant which I made with them. Mm -hmm. Then my anger shall be kindled. If we get talking like this, what the people gonna call us? Just me, no. Negative. Yeah. We don't believe in the people. The people could have. How do uh, how do we know the people was not? They could have been fine. We just talking down on. You know why? You know why the people gonna mess up? Cause we spoke that into existence. That was they tell us, right? You know what the good, most high God just did? He just spoke it into existence. He just spoke. Did they mess up yet? At this point, they didn't mess up. Did he say they were gonna mess up? Did they actually mess up? Yeah. Most high God made them mess up. By the logic that these people use, most high. If we can speak something into existence. The Most High God, who spoke and created earth, created the heavens, certainly he can speak something into existence, right? So you know, by their logic, he made that happen. That's his fault. These people don't even know when they get to speaking that, that voodoo, that speak stuff into existence, nonsense. They don't even know what the implication is. They don't even know that by saying that, what they really doing is... Get rid of the whole thing and relearn the book and really relearn it. Take yourself back to the base and you know what? I don't know it unless I read it today. Otherwise, you'll keep, you know what I'm saying? You're keeping some of that, that nasty doctrine these people have and the nasty thinking that they have and you'll never be able to connect back to a true Hebrew throw. That's what you got. You got a bunch of Hebrews that got Hebrew information and they, they want to be Hebrews and they acknowledge that they're the true Hebrews, but you know what happens? They still got Christian darn hypocrite minds. So you can, you hold these two opposing thoughts in your brain, and it confuses your whole doctor. Yeah, you wear fringes. Yeah, you stop eating pork. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Your butt, you know what I'm saying? But now you got multiple wives. Right? Now your butt smoking weed, talking about, but they come from the earth, though. Is that like Friday one? All these things come from the earth. What don't come from the earth? Like, I mean, I mean, how do you logically break that up? I mean, oh, let's see. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got, you got penicillin. They're going to take a whole bunch of chemicals that come from the earth. You know what I'm saying? And mix it into something else. But you're going to call that man-made. But we, now that come from the earth. We ain't going to talk about all the stuff they put in. How your weed got orange and purple hairs? It just grew like that on its own? Or they put a bunch of chemicals into the ground. So they go, so what's the difference of this? This blueberry, strawberry, cuckoo kush. You know what I'm saying? And then this uh this uh this uh you know what I'm saying, what what you know what I'm saying, what 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 medication they on like, you know what I'm saying? Or this vaccine. What's the difference between them? Nah, I ain't putting no vaccine, nah, you ain't don't vaccinate. Oh yeah, you real smart, huh? Don't vaccinate.
vaccinate them kids, guess what you about to do? Smoke some darn weed. That thing got all types of chemicals and they injected that thing, grew it under special lighting. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like cocaine and heroin too. That'd be it. Song gonna be a witness. You gotta go learn this song. Y'all gonna pass this song down from generation to generation. And this song, y'all gonna be singing and y'all, y'all gonna forget why y'all singing. Y'all gonna think about the lyrics of this song. You gonna be like, you know what? God already told us exactly where we at. That song was heavy too. All right, watch this thing. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that flows with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat, then then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about, even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. Uh -huh. He gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, uh -huh. for thou shalt bring the children of Israel in the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words in the law of this book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. So you remember the Ark that we made back in Exodus, right? We put together an Ark, and the Ark was like a box, you know what I'm saying, that had two cherubim, two angels pretty much, on top of it, you know what I'm saying, with the wings touching. And it had a seat up there, and then you could lift it up, and on the inside you could put stuff. And when we put something in there, we put Moses' rod, I mean uh, Aaron's rod in there, because we had to prove and retain the proof that Aaron was supposed to be the priest. The chosen. Right? You know what I'm saying? We we had a little struggle about that. Most of our God proved it out for us. He used that rod to prove it out. So we said, you know what? We're going to keep that rod. Right? We also put manna, you know what I'm saying, inside of there because we
than a human being. But guess what? You get 2,000 years later, guess what everybody's saying? Jesus never existed. What proof do you have, Jesus? Because once you get far enough, people looking like, I ain't never experienced it. How do I know? So the most I got knew that. He said, you know what I'm Put this inside the ark. You know what I'm saying? Put this on the ark. You know how it is. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to forget. Teach them this song. Let it be a witness to them. So he's giving the people evidence. So when things get down and they ain't got Moses, they ain't got Joshua no more, now y'all still have some evidence that y'all can rock with. Right? Something to build your faith. Most high God never been a God that ain't giving you nothing on faith. Right? You're going to have something to believe in. That's how we still got this book. Alright? Some people got more, some people got less. Some people get vision, some people got all that stuff. You know, at the very least, he's going to give you something. And it's always going to make sense. It's never going to be no voodoo, hocus pocus, you know what I'm saying, magical stuff. It's always going to be something that makes logical sense. That's how God works. Alright? Let's go. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Uh -huh. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. Uh -huh. For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves and he turn said, aside you from the way utterly which corrupt I commanded yourself. you. And you're going to turn aside from which the way I commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of In which of the days? Earth, the latter days. What do you think the latter days are? He's talking about the days at the end. When you say latter days, he said evil will befall you in the days at the end. For what reason? Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Mm -hmm. He's talking about all the idols that we work, all the things that we do with sin in our hands. All right, keep He said, thou shalt not go over there. He talking to Moses. He like, Moses, your butt ain't going. Right? This is all the land. Now, this is everything that the people are going to see. But let me remind you, your butt ain't going. What else? So Moses, the servant of the Lord. Y'all better stop playing with God, man. Moses, Moses, this whole thing. Moses made this whole thing happen from the people wise. Lord, as far as the people can see, Moses made all this thing happen. Truly, Moses, our God did. Right? But from the people wise, Moses... He obeyed God all the way through. God gave him all the power. He said that he would be like a God to Pharaoh. Right? And be, just because the man didn't sanctify the Most High God and say, hey, the Most High God is getting this water for you. He made a mistake and said, we are getting this water for you. Most High God said, you know what? Your butt ain't going over with him. That's it. Your butt ain't going over with him. Guess who else didn't go? Aaron. Miriam, Cora, and all this company. Cora, nobody, nobody that that Desiree originally came Liel. out the out the land as an adult. There's the Leel, made only people that made it, up. Caleb and Joshua. Out of that whole generation, only the babies, Caleb and Joshua. Anybody twenty years old and up, they die. There's no way you, you there's no way you get there. No way you get there. Twenty years old and up, you got to be. The youngest person, that, the oldest person that got in the land was 19 when he said they couldn't go. So he had to be like, what, 59? Mm -hmm. So the, young, the, the youngest person, the oldest person getting to the land would be 59. Yeah. Okay. That's a book. Keep going.
So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth, Beth Peor, but no man knows of his... Died. His eyes was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses, and laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land. And in that, and in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. He said, it was only one Moses. My man was on 20. Still like a young man. Yeah, it was only one Moses. Nobody else came. Nobody came since that the Most High God spoke to face to face at the book. He trying to let you know Joshua taking over. It ain't gonna be the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It may seem like Joshua ain't the one. That had to be tough though to lose somebody like Moses in that, yeah. in that situation in that time. Like you know shake you up. Yeah. That's why the most high God has to do it in front of all the people. Like, listen, Moses is giving this over to Joshua. Yeah. That's gonna shake the people up. That's what we're gonna be reading. Let's you know say what I'm saying? Like, let's say if you were 59, you were 19 at the time when you had to chill in there for 40 years. So you since 19. Now you like 59 years old and you see you leave the man to die. Yeah, that's 40 years you deal with this man. That's tough. And he out of there. You know what I'm saying? And he's still looking, you know what I'm saying? He's 120, but he still got his dick. You know what I'm saying? He can still get out there and get it in. You know what I'm saying? Mix it up with you. Probably even made you feel like you should die too. Like, man, I should be. Like, Moses gone. I might as well just be like, why am I even here? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? We're going to read that thing. We're going to read how, how Joshua was stressing out. You know what I'm saying? Trying to keep the people together. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We'll start clean. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then we can shoot through all the history. You know what I'm saying? Get, you know what I'm saying? Get good. You know what I'm saying? Then we get, we'll start we'll start uh, referencing back to the law as as we start to see some of the things that we do throughout our history. These are the parts of the Bible that, you know what I'm saying, we're not going we're not gonna really get a whole lot of teaching on. We're not going to get a lot of teaching on the law. We're not going to get a lot of teaching on the history. Not in depth, right? Not where you can really understand it and be a part of it and put yourself in that in that position so that you can really understand it and really feel it. All right? So that's what we try to do. We try to make sure that we can, we can get in there because these are the things that shape our view once we get to the New Testament. That shapes our view once we get into these prophecies. All right, and by by it shaping our view, you get in something like revelations and all that. All these little sayings that are being said, all these little mysteries that are being said. The more you understand the history, the more you understand the mystery. Look at me sounding like a Christian pastor. The more you understand the history, the more you understand the mystery. Can I get an amen? Right? <laughs> but you look at it like they, you know, they always try to put some, you know, they be rappers, bro. Them they be tight to, you know, they be putting that thing together. You know what I'm saying? But uh. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll pick up with Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, uh, and then we'll kind of shoot through and uh, just kind of figure out where this thing land up and, you know what I'm saying, where we are. Any questions? All right, let's pray out. Yeah, the sound of Moses is real. That thing's so tough.